What's up, everybody? I want to welcome you guys to the Artisan Podcast, and today we're doing something fresh and new for you guys. Uh, I want to get back on making more content for the channel, and with the Rona going on right now, this is the time we're going to look back, and there's going to be a lot of stupid shit that you see people putting out without a whole lot of substance, and maybe this isn't that much better, but we're giving you something fresh for you to check out. Today, I have a, a new guest. I got my man, Mike. What up, Mike? What's going on, bro? What up, what up, what up? It's good to have you on the pod. We've been talking about it for a while now. Of course. No doubt. So, uh, we have been talking. I have been kicking this around for a while with a few different people, but you and I are the first people to do it for uh, for this channel anyway. Uh, we wanted to talk about classic albums. Not just hip-hop albums, but we probably going to focus on hip-hop for a, a little while at first, but... We want to talk about classic hip hop albums, and the first one that came to mind for me, it was kind of at the, it was towards the tail end of my high school career. Uh, the dude was a huge star. He had started making a lot of movies. He mm -hmm. hadn't even really got into his real role, his his real flow into that yet. But uh, we're talking about Ludacris today, and the album we're talking about today is not Chicken and Bear. It's not Red Light District. Uh, it's not um, uh, Back for the First Time. It is. Uh, release therapy, which is to me his uh -huh. best album front to back. I actually went through Chicken and Beer last night and this morning, and there's some serious, serious yeah. hits on Chicken and Beer, bro. I'm gonna just throw some of these names out on, on Chicken and Beer. All right, so, go ahead. before we get started on that, uh, Ludacris has the greatest opening intros of anybody ever, bro. I'm just Please throwing that out there. You know, like that's a bold statement. He <laughs> it was got, just the intro. Yeah, just the intros. I'm saying, like the first track, like his intro tracks, are right. the hottest in the history of hip hop. I'm just gonna throw that out there because they're kind of skits. They're like theatrical. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he might rap a verse, maybe two. It's usually some fat ass beat on there, and then he goes right. from there. You know what I mean? I mean usually, I would, I would agree to an extent because it's like the build ups in the right. intro. Song. It, it sets him up perfectly for his style of rapping. Like it he's really a do. He's a rebel. Like he's a puncher, but he also does the pause and stop or whatever, and then keeps going. Yeah. And put so much emphasis on, on on words he says. So he usually do a good job at picking the beats. That he does pick great the, beats, bro. You know, to kick off the album, set the set the uh, you know set the tone, uh, so to speak. So I, I can see why he was strongly. <laughs> You know, believe that, make that statement. Um, I got. I, I would have to again. I would have to go back and compare it to his to his other work as well uh, when I get a chance. But this right here, that's you can make that argument for sure. Yeah, man. I mean, I would. I would say that uh, there aren't a whole lot of people that could compare just up front with that. You know what yeah. I mean? But. Uh, uh, it will be an interesting exercise to go through. It's just when you when you when you talk about a guy's style and who fits and what fits and what, right. it's just that's that's a really he 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 picks great beats for himself. Uh, so some of the things. So this album came out two thousand six, kind of two thousand seven. It, it qualified for most of the stuff in the oh seven Grammys. Uh, so I'm I'm placing it in oh seven. Uh, I'll just give some quick facts about 07. So I looked up the highest grossing movies in 07 just to give people a bit of a, you know, to take their mind back 12 years, well, 13 years now. The number one grossing movie was Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, which raked in $936 million. Holy shit. Uh, number two was Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, which raked in $940 million. Spider Man 3, 890 million. Shrek the Third, 813. Transformers, this is the first Transformers, 709 million. Uh, I'm actually shocked it's that low. Ratatouille, which was fantastic, 620 million. I Am Legend, which was really good, 585 million. The Simpsons movie, 527, which was really fun. National Treasure Book of Secrets. This one kind of blew me a little bit. Uh, four hundred fifty-seven million dollars that movie made, and shockingly, in tenth place was three hundred. Uh, uh, four hundred and fifty-six million. That kind of, that kind of threw me a little bit, man. Yeah, um, I can see how. Yeah, yeah, like I, 
it's, that movie was off the chain, man. I thought I thought that that movie would be a little bit a little bit higher. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But uh, it's all good. So now that we uh, put you in the right place for for that, uh, I actually went and looked up the Grammys for. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, okay. yeah, I went and looked up the Grammys, some of the Grammy Awards for 2007, bro. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Let's see. Let's yeah. Really so check this out. Uh, the the record of the year was Dixie Chicks. That was uh, uh, the the record of the year. So it's not ready to make nice. An album of the year was Taking the Long Way by Dixie Chicks. So Dixie Chicks kind of owned 2007. Oddly enough. I don't remember that. Real. I don't really remember that. Maybe because we don't listen. To yeah, Chicks, we don't. So. We. I was about to say we wasn't probably in tune. Um, and then that alone, the Grammys, if it's really not an artist you want to win or an artist you're looking forward to see, you're not going to really pay attention to the other acts, you know? Yeah. So, oddly enough, bro, I went and looked at this. So, Mary J. Blige was huge in 07, bro. She got eight nominees and mm-hmm. won uh, eight, eight, uh, uh, yeah, she got nominated for eight things and got three wins. Uh, Dixie Chicks swept for every a nomination that they had. They got they they got a win. Uh, John Mayer had a big year, uh, five nominations, two wins. James Blunt five nominations, zero wins. But I don't you know. Narles Barkley who came out of nowhere for me. I wasn't really oh, so much yeah. paying attention. They was fighting, bro. No doubt, bro. Four yeah, nominees, but... two wins. Justin yeah. Timberlake, um, mm-hmm. four nominations, two wins, and Carrie Underwood. Three nominations and two wins. So, listening to those names, uh, mm-hmm. Carrie Underwood got Best New Artist that year. And second place was Chris Brown. Third place, Corin Bailey Ray. Uh, I don't know who Imogen Heap is. And James Blunt came in last. Who, who knew? I forgot about James Blunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Check this out. Random fact from the Olympics mm-hmm. in that year, bro. Random, just random fact. Ike Turner got a Grammy that year for a best traditional blues album. Wow. Yeah. Slap a bitch, <laughs> Ike Turner. Got, got, yeah, man. And to me, that was kind of funny, man. I, I thought that was kind of wild. I just looked it up. I was like, wow, I didn't even know to do was still making yeah, music at that that's particular time. That's kind of crazy. It is crazy, right? <laughs> like, what? Ike? 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 Like, Ike? Yeah, Ike? That's, yeah that's man. crazy, crazy. No okay. doubt. Okay, America. <laughs> exactly. Are y'all willing to forgive anything around here? I, it's, it's all good. I, I'm good with that, man. Yeah. After, this is after the movie. You know what I'm saying? So we all know, yeah. we all know we what so, was we going so on. Yeah. We so bent on it. We, so, we grew up on the movie. For sure. Not the artist, exactly. Sure. exactly. What so, love we see him movie. differently than, than the old head, too, probably. <laughs> Big facts, dude. Big yeah. facts. Big facts. <laughs> So uh, there's a couple other things. Maybe I should, we, we could do a pod on the 2007 mm-hmm. uh, uh, Grammys, but I just wanted to throw that out there, man. Uh, also, 2007. Uh, I'm sorry, not on the Billboard. Mm-hmm. Uh, T Pain is all over the 2007 Billboard. I know this isn't about T T Pain, right? He's all up and down. Yeah, uh, I'm not on this thing, I'm not bro. Buy you a drink. Featuring Young Jock, mm. peaked at number one and spent 17 weeks in the top 10. 17, 17 weeks. Just throwing that out there, big dog. Yeah, that's a big deal. It is. That's a deep thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's that's pretty that's pretty serious, man. Pretty serious. So let's get into the album, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is straight off the Wikipedia page. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, um... Actually, let's talk about Luda real, real quick. Real quick. Yeah. Is our thoughts on him? Yeah. So, do you remember the first time you heard him? Yes, I do. Um, I was late on him, though, but I do remember the first time I heard of him. Yeah. So, I think when most of us not in the South first got hip to him, it was mm-hmm. Southern hospitality when we first got hip to him. Cadillac yeah. grills, Cadillac, you know, right, it, was, right. it was that thing. And, and I remember the first time I heard Luda, I was just like, oh, shit, this dude for real. You know what I mean? It, I don't right. know what it was. It was something different because a lot of the Southern rappers were doing like the slow thing. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't really rapping slow, bro. He was kind of rapping uh, he fast was, for a lot of those yeah. guys. 
Um, yeah, for me, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, would you finish? No, go ahead, go ahead. For, for me, it was, um, when I first heard Luda, it was it was that song, the, uh, whatever, Cadillac Grills, and I was just like, uh, it's catchy. He had right. a catchy style. But what, what drew me in was the antics in his videos. He gave me that bust the rhymes. He gave me that bust the rhymes, Missy Elliott vibe. No so doubt. I, I was so I wasn't even caring about his bars at the time because I was just looking at how he was doing his videos. And he was doing it at a time we didn't see videos like that for a while. So when he came to continue it, then I started listening to what, what he was saying on like um, roll, roll Out. And even ball, though. Ball, 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 ball. Yeah, but when uh, I then, uh, no doubt yeah, when you watch the video, you you impressed. But then when you just listening to it in some headphones and, and like on a bus or somewhere, this he was spitting, he was talking, and it's like yo, this guy, this guy got it. He's, Bro, he got it. He I mean, got bars. He's one of the most unique rappers, really, to come out of Atlanta, man. Yeah. Um, really, out of the South. Period. He has such a. Uh, 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 a complex cadence, man. And I'm so glad you brought up the video because I didn't even think about that aspect of it. Right. Um, his videos were really fun, man. They were really fun. And I uh, hadn't really thought about that when I was going back and looking at the album. And you're right. It was, his videos were comical, bro. You know what I mean? It was kind of, it's kind of going Very back comical. to some of the stuff that I was talking about earlier with his intros. Uh, super theatrical, man. Everything was over the top and larger than life, dog. And, and then when you got that, that um, creative, um, when you put something together, that creative plus lyrical content, um, style and ability, so you showing people you can hang yeah. um, with your pen, like your pen, you showing us your pen, right, and then right. you show us your creative eye in that sense, come on, you got to be in that conversation. I agree. I agree. He came on strong, dog. Yeah. Strong, man. And then, you know, he followed, well, that was technically his second album, but his third album, we already talked about it earlier. We should probably do like a real analysis on this at some point. Maybe not right now. Mm -hmm. But Chicken and Beer was his third album, man. And, dude, hits on hits on hits on hits with this thing, man. Uh... So, uh, Blow It Out is on there. Stand Up. Uh, that Stand Up. Yeah, that Splash Waterfalls is on here. That Diamond in the Back is on here. Uh, Screwed Up is on here. Uh, uh yeah, screwed man. Screwed Up real quick. Yeah. Screwed that, that, Up. That, that Pussy Popping on the Headstand is on here, yeah. man. Who Let These Holes in My Room? That's on here. It, man, it's some, bro, some real bangers on this album, bro. Real bangers on his album. But I didn't pick this one, even though I do think that Chicken and Bear is a classic. Mm -hmm. I think Release Therapy is a little bit better, bro. So, um, mm. I don't know, the, the the first song on here, Warning, it's one of those regular intros that he, mm -hmm. that, that he does. We coming out, spitting bars, and whatnot. Matter of fact, before we get into that, I'm going to uh, read uh, straight from Wikipedia. Shout out to Wikipedia. Oh yeah, that's out, for, bro. I, 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 let me let me let me say this on here. From now on, every time Wikipedia asks me for some money, I'm gonna give them some, bro. Gotcha. From, from here on, G, we gotta support Wikipedia, G. Gotcha, Got me gotcha. through college, bro. Got me through high school. <laughs> Let's just be real about Dude, it. That's facts. You know what I'm saying? Like we gotta, bro. We gotta. Wikipedia. Man, for real, absolutely, absolutely. Big shout to Wikipedia. Big shout, big dog. Uh, so. Release Therapy is the sixth studio album by American Hip Hop Recording Artist Little Chris. It was released on September 26, 2006 under the Disturbing the Peace and Def Jam South production. Uh, production for the album was done by the Neptunes, the Track Stars, Dre and Vital, DJ Toomp, I'm assuming, the Runners, and Polo to Dawn, and get, features guest contributions from rappers Young Jeezy, Phil Mob, Benny Siegel, Pimp C, C Murder, and the RB singers Pharrell, Mary J. Blige, R. Kelly, and Bobby Valentino. Uh, release therapy garnered, garnered mixed reception from critics unsure of Ludacris' exploration into the more serious content after previous works being more lighthearted and party filled. I'm going to stop right there. That's a problem for me. Uh, 
at this particular time, Luda was in his early 30s when this came out, 2006. So he would have been, uh, let's see, he was born in 77. 30, 29, 29 or 30, I guess, when that came, when this came out, you know what I'm saying? Uh, bro, come on, man. He wasn't 22 no more. You got to let this man grow up a little bit, right? Like, Yeah, and you have to, I mean, that's that's the whole point of, uh, to me, being a good artist and a more a seasoned artist is that you grow with the times, you know? Absolutely. If, if he was young and having parties, then he's going to rap about that. Right. But as he's done movies and getting older and no telling what's going on in his personal life, I mean, as an artist, you you have to, you express that, you know? No doubt. With, and you try to keep the same, you know, demeanor. You try to keep the same vibe that you always created for your fans, but, you know, you, you, you also grow as well. I agree. I I, I agree, and let me read some some quotes from, uh, from uh, also from Wikipedia from some uh, from from some artists. I mean, from some critics rather. It says in a review for the AV Club, writer Nathan Rabin or Rabin called Ludacris called it Ludacris' most mature album to date, praising the wordy and energetic energetic party tracks and the surprising Fourier into introspective introspection later on concluding that always good but seldom great release therapy is a rare ma major rec major label rap album that suffers from too much substance mm. i don't like that because of this you telling me essentially i don't know who uh nathan rabin is i'm gonna look up right now as i'm as i'm checking this out oh he's a white guy okay nathan so <laughs> You telling me that you telling me that rap with substance is a essentially a problem. You said it suffers from too much substance. I don't appreciate that, bro. Because Not one of the things that we talk about amongst ourselves as black folks and as consumers of music and consumers of hip hop is there's there's, there's too much uh, 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 wine and song. There's too much uh, there's there's too much partying. There's no there's nothing. To feed the brain, and then you got cats talking about there's too much. It suffers from too much substance. You know what I mean? It, it goes on to say lyrically and thematically, Ludacris is growing up, so perhaps it's inevitable that he's incurring some growing pains along the way. I don't know what that. Robert Christgau gave an album a two star honorable mention, indicating a likable effort that consumers attuned to its overriding aesthetic. Or individual vision may well enjoy. He cited "Tell It Like It Is," which is a dope ass song, "Mouse to yeah. Be," and "Slap" as highlights of Luke Chris's transition to a more mature content while maintaining his humorous side. Uh, there was another one in here. Uh, Marissa Brown of All Music commented. Uh, that therapy, that the therapy half of the album, but the release, but that the commended the therapy half of the album, but felt the release portion of the tracks were missing some humor, saying that the witty rhymes made the chicken and beer, what that made chicken and beer so great, are in short supply. And you know, I I, I don't I don't know that I necessarily mm -hmm. agree with that, because if you listen to, I'm gonna pull up the song list here. If you listen to songs like uh, Money Maker and Girls, uh, I'm looking for some girls going wild. That's the that, 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 that's, that's song on there. And Satisfaction and Woozy. Uh, you can, he is being playful on that album, on, 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 on some of that stuff. And I guess they want the 24 year old goofy kid shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. but I, I don't, I, I, think, I think that's not what this was trying to be. So saying that the album wasn't silly enough and not giving it the high marks that it deserved is problematic for me, Big Dog. What you think about that? Uh, I agree. I agree with, with your statement on as far as the criticism goes because maturity comes with being conscious, right? Socially, whatever. Right. 
personally, right? And if you listen to release therapy on certain songs, I'm trying to pull up the playlist, but there's certain songs on there, certain verses, lines, um, metaphors. He used it to address how he feel about certain stuff going on in the world, going on around his personal life. Right. Definitely. Now, if you look at now, just to point out something, if you look at chicken and beer, to just the cover alone lets you know, okay, he, he got fried chicken. The lady, uh, he just looked like he just wow, food. Right. Don't don't give an f about much. And release therapy. So of course, somebody like uh, the critic who, who made the statement, of course, he'll be like, oh, he's not funny anymore because he's addressing certain things that a lot of us don't want to address. So when it comes to our favorite artists or our favorite music or or things like that, we want to keep we want to keep them in a, bo- a certain box. A certain, you know what I mean? And we don't want them to, to 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 be as serious and as real as we are. Out, you know, when we're not listening to that music, when we are dealing with personal things, no doubt. but Ray really, Stephanie just blew the way of saying, "Yo, I'm human, mm-hmm. and that's why I'm wrong. That's why I've been." Hey. Yeah, you know, man. So. I think it's and one of the songs, uh, "Mouths to Feed." Actually, I was just listening to that. He was talking about how he has a record label now and how he has artists signed to him and how mm-hmm. you know he has to be responsible. It's more than just about Ludacris now. It's about building an empire, you know what I mean? And he was, you know, really starting to transition into movies, uh, doing a lot more movies at this particular time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he couldn't necessarily do the stuff. It seems like he couldn't do the stuff that he was wanted to do anymore. You know what I mean? And, you know, we've heard a lot of rappers talk about how, you know, they got to a point in a, a, of their life in the music-making game that they... Uh, had a crisis of consciousness. You Pretty know? much. And he starts talking about that and like war with God. You know what I mean? And yeah. and it slapped, you know? And I I have a deep appreciation for that because that's something that we we actually deal with. Maybe not in the same way that Luda does, but we all, you know, I had one a, a couple days ago. I was thinking about it last night, just as far as the things that I wanted to do, the mm-hmm. amount of output that I had, the 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 level of Success, I feel like I was and or wasn't having. That's some of the stuff that is important. It's stuff that we need to be thinking about, you know. And I think he should be commended for that, man. I I I, I really do. And if you look at the run he was having from like 2001, essentially through uh, when this album came out in late 06 through 07. Right. dude, there wasn't too many rappers who was putting out content quite like this, man. Nah, nah. Not, not to that, not at that level. Exactly uh, at this level, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, well, well, well. We, we had, we had Rockefeller, you know. Definitely, definitely. We had Rockefeller. Right. We had the Dipset. We had Cam and everybody. Uh, um, but on, a, uh, to me, on a mainstream level, and, and on in that in that style, I would say he definitely reigned supreme when it came to that. Like, mm. kind of like that. Like I said, like the, the, those who came before him once did, he kept it going. You know Definitely. what I mean? So he made hip hop fun. You know, he's one of the few people that made it fun again, I guess, um, during the two thousands. So he was in his own lane for a while. Like you said, nobody it was it wasn't too many artists you can off back just think about that was doing it like Luda. And that's one hundred percent. Definitely, man. And like I said, even thinking now, I can't really think of anybody that raps quite the way that he does. Uh, like I said, he picks great, uh, he picks great tracks, man. Whoever's yeah. producing music for him, uh, is doing it at a very high level. And, um, uh, they have a way, whatever producers he works with, have a way of bringing out his best side. Uh, and he does a great job at, 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 at giving the world his best side, really. Uh, and given some of the, uh, some of the critical acclaim that this fall fell under, uh, so this, that, that this was getting, you know, a song like, uh, that song, it's a song called Runaway Love with, uh, Mary J. Blige on there. And it got to number two on the Billboard charts and spent five weeks there. Uh, that was more of a conscious song. And he was talking about, really talking about young girls and mm-hmm. things that they're dealing with, um, at that particular time. Another song in 07, was glamorous with Fergie, 
got to number one and spent three oh, years yeah. in the top I forgot ten. About that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I forgot about that too. I would have never thought about that song until um, he, until I looked it up, and I was like, wow, you know. And that's just that's really a, tri- a tribute to Luda and his versatility <laughs> to be able to work with somebody like uh, like Fergie and really be able to put out some uh, quality content like that. Uh, you know, you brought up something, uh, cats who were having, uh, who were kind of like at the top during that particular time, um, sure. you know, his rise and kind of peak fell, his rise kind of came up during, uh, uh, Jay-Z's peak and kind of mm. Ludacris's peak kind of ra- like ran at the exact same time during, uh, Lil Wayne's like mixtape, ex- like extravaganza. And I was just kind of looking at the timeline, and I think, you know, it's kind of bad timing on his part. You know what I'm saying? He fell into Lil Wayne's kind of like, you know, like the period of Wayne that we all really love the most. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. You know, I think, uh, I don't know, maybe he just is not focusing on music quite as much. Maybe he got too much money for us. But uh, I would like to hear some new stuff from Luda, man, to be totally honest. Same with you. I think... Uh, but I think that in order for us to hear something new from Luda, we probably got to <laughs> see what movie he's coming out with next. Because he'll probably right. do a song or a track, soundtrack or whatever. Right, right. More purpose. Yeah, Luda would, Luda would definitely, he could still hang. He could definitely still hang. One. Without question, bro. Without question. I uh, I would love to, um, maybe it probably, like I said, it had to be like purpose-built music. But I would love to get some more content up out of here, man. Luda really is one of my favorite rappers of all time. And I just love his... Uh, I love his, uh, like I say, his flow and his style and his, his you know, flair for uh, the dramatic. Uh, did you want to add anything else on there? Well, as far as for Ludacris? For uh, Ludacris, for the album, uh, we can do, we, we can maybe do Chicken and Beer and Southern Hospitality at another, at, at another point or maybe do yeah, some other stuff. Uh, but, you know, just your impressions on the, on, on the album, whatever. Uh, no, this was, this was, in my personal opinion, it's probably... I would have to go back before I say it's his best album, but it's definitely his best produced album, in my opinion. Like, this one, Polo to Don was like, he was working with Wayne real heavy. So yeah. the fact that Luda got him on there, the fact that he, he, you know, it's like, like you said, the production team that helped him bring the best side of, of him out. And for, and for this type of album, yeah, he really did a good job. So for me, for this album, it was the production that stood out. Um, War With God is probably my favorite Um Favorite instrumental on the joint in, in that intro. Yeah, man. So I got, I gotta, you know, I gotta kind of agree with you that yeah, this is definitely an album worth talking about and appreciating and celebrating for what it was then and how it still resonates to this day. Mm-hmm. And, um fire album, fire artist. I think Luda still got some shit in the chamber that he can, you know, if he wanted to, could get busy, still get busy. I agree, bro. One thousand percent. Yeah. One thousand percent, man. Um. So I got nothing else on there. Uh. You can pick the next album that we do. Which one you want to do, Doc? Uh, next album. Yeah. Luda. No, uh, uh, not just not just album. The next, the next uh classic classic hip hop album we do. Which what uh, which one are you which one are you thinking? What's the classic that I I want to do? <laughs> oh, I got one, bro. We gonna do. B by Common. B the whole album. We can we can just brush over it real quick. We don't got to go into details till like another time maybe. But oh for definitely. sure, let's do that one. That's that's yeah. the one we'll do next. That that'll be uh, uh we'll do it in a couple days. Maybe Saturday. Well today yeah. is Saturday. We'll do it like uh uh Monday or Tuesday. So you want to go? up, We're gonna do the B album. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's do that. That give us some time to listen to it and uh, take some notes. Facts, facts. I bet. All right, guys, I want to thank you guys for joining us on this. Uh, I want to thank my man Mike for showing up. Uh, I'm going to put a link to uh, some his his YouTube and, and this and maybe some other stuff so you can go to, so you guys can check it out. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, let us know what, what what you think the next album should be that we talk about. Uh, genre is is of no consequence. We will we will we will listen to whatever, man. Uh, send us a link in the comments below that uh, where we can check it out. 
And uh, thanks for tuning in to the Artisan Podcast. We've got much, 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 much more content coming from you. And Mike will be on here a lot more. Once again, thanks, Mike. I appreciate you, big guy. No problem. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely.